Tonight, Miss Susan Peters stars in One More Spring from Studio One at CBS. My heart tells me that I need affection and love because that's what it's made for. We'll die otherwise, my heart and I. My heart will stop beating. We invite you to Studio One, radio's celebrated playhouse of dramatic entertainment, featuring the world's great stories, novels, and plays in special versions for listening. And now to introduce tonight's great story, here is the director of Studio One, Fletcher Markle. Next Sunday, five days from tonight, the 21st of March, is surely a glowing and important day on any calendar, any year. For on that day, the time of the singing of birds is come and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. It's the first day of the year's brightest season. It's a time for young men's fancies to turn, for everyone's fevers to rise, and for Studio One to present you with Vincent McConnor's version for listening of One More Spring by Robert Nathan. Mr. Nathan's magical story of love and enchantment and spring in New York Central Park couldn't be more timely. Just as the presence in our cast tonight of one of Hollywood's most entrancing actresses couldn't be more pleasing. And entrancing is certainly the word for our star, Miss Susan Peters, who plays Elizabeth for you tonight. With Miss Peters, you'll be hearing Everett Sloan as Mr. Rosenberg, Glenn Anders as Mr. Sheridan, and I'm going to remain at the microphone with them to play a young man whose name is as curious and wonderful is the half-real, half-enchanted world in which he comes to life. Mr. Jared Otcar. Music, please, to introduce the magic of spring. For lo, the winter is almost past. Can I help you? I... I wondered, that crystal candelabra in your window, how much does it cost? Oh, I'm very sorry, miss. That candelabra's not for sale. Oh, I had my heart set on it. That's the only thing I keep in the window, because it isn't for sale, and so I never have to take it out to show anyone. You have some really wonderful antiques in your shop. Oh, is there anything else you'd care to see? No, the candelabra was the only thing I wanted. I'm sorry. Well, if you won't sell it, I suppose you won't. I often meant to stop in and ask about it. See, I live nearby. I think I've noticed you passing the windows. Your face is very familiar. Oh? Perhaps you've seen me on the stage. You're an actress? Of course, I really should buy a pair of candelabra, not just one. I have a rather large living room. One candelabra might seem lost in it. Well, I must get to rehearsal. Goodbye. Uh, uh, goodbye. <clears throat> Was that a customer, Mr. Otcar? Young lady wanted to buy my candelabra. Why didn't you sell it to her? You could use the money. Oh, that candelabra's been in my family ever since I can remember. I couldn't sell it. Well, that's your affair. My job is to take over for your creditors. I've checked everything. Hmm. Does that mean I can leave? Any time you want. I have one or two papers for you to sign, that's all. Too bad you're losing your business. No, it wasn't much of a business. I guess I wasn't much of a businessman. Where do I sign? Right here. Thanks. Where are you going, Mr. Otcar? Oh... I don't know. No place special. Well, that's how it always is. I can tell you I don't enjoy being a deputy sheriff, putting people on the street. Don't you have a home, Mr. Otcar? No, I've been sleeping here in back of the shop. Well, I won't sleep tonight thinking about you. Yeah, I'll be all right. But uh, you can help me pile my things on that little push cart outside, if you will. <laughs> At least you've got a bed. Uh, next proceeds of Jared Otcar's flyer in the antique business. A bed, a crystal candelabra, a stove, and an umbrella. What more could a man want? I, uh, I beg your pardon, sir. Yes? I noticed you resting here at the edge of the park. Permit me to present my car. Oh, thanks. Morris, Rosenberg, concert violinist, lectures, master classes, and concerts. Uh... <clears throat> Turn the card, please. On the other side, you will find reviews of my concert. Oh, Mr. Rosenberg is a genius on the violin. The Oswego Press said that. Mr. Rosenberg was the violinist of the evening. That's from the Galesburg Democrat. Mr. Rosenberg was adequate. I don't recall the name of that newspaper. 
And uh, what are you doing in New York City? Well, I thought in this great metropolis I could play many concerts. I expected to be overwhelmed with offers. But the truth is I've only performed on street corners. And when did you eat last? Uh, since you asked. Two days ago, I had something. Well, I have a sandwich here in my pocket. Oh, no. I insist. You will have half and I'll have half. Well, perhaps if you insist. Just a bite. Thank you. <laughs> I see you have a violin case under your arm. Is there a violin inside? Yes. A fine fiddle. Now, eat slowly. You're getting the gesture. Why don't you uh, sell your violin and invest in some business? The man is crazy. Sell my fiddle. How would I give concerts without it? I hadn't thought of that. I have my fiddle and, as you see, my coat with the fur collar. These are two of the three essentials of a concert artist. Mm -hmm. I lack only the third essential, an appearance in Carnegie Hall. Meanwhile, uh, where do you live, Mr. Rosenberg? Here in Central Park. The birds wake me every morning, singing out of tune. Well, I'm as homeless as yourself. Yes, but I notice you have a fine bed there on your pushcart. I also have flats for my bed and a mattress. Well, perhaps we can be homeless together. Why not? Let us go into the park and find a place to set up our bed. I know of a small valley in the center of the park, hidden by lilac bushes. We might escape the attention of the police. Well, fine. Come. I will help you to push the cart into the park. We are pioneers, Mr. Rosenberg, pushing into the wilderness to find a new home. <laughs> Why, hello there. I beg your pardon? I hope you don't mind my speaking to you. Well, I certainly do. I'm not... Oh, don't you remember you were in my antique shop this afternoon? Oh, yes, the, the crystal candelabra. What are you doing here? Oh, I was sitting on this bench listening to the music. They're dancing on the mall. The last dance of the season. I know. I was watching all those young couples dancing in the starlight. I'm... Surprised to meet a famous actress walking in the park. Well, I, I'm very fond of walking. And, of course, offstage people don't recognize me. I suppose I should know your name, but I've been to the theater so seldom. Well, then it isn't likely you'd know my name. It's Cheney, Elizabeth Cheney. And you're Mr. Otcar. I noticed the sign in your shop window. What's your first name? <laughs> Jared. It's a nice name. And you have a very nice shop. Well, not anymore. A deputy sheriff has it. You've lost it? I'm afraid I wasn't meant to run an antique shop. Why not? Well, really, it belonged to an uncle of mine. He died just after I got out of the army. I put all my savings in the shop to save it for his wife. And then she died, and the whole thing belonged to me. Only I knew so little about antiques. I'm very sorry that you've lost your shop. Oh, don't be. For a long time, I've wanted to be free to travel and see America, that sort of thing. Now I can. If only I had a car. It's good to be free. That's a fine tune they're playing. I wonder, would you dance with me? Right here? Why not? Well, people might think we're crazy or something. Oh, everyone's over on the mall listening to the music. All right, Mr. Otcar. I'll dance with you. Good. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I just thought. Yes? Well, if you lost your shop... You also lost the candelabra. Oh, no, it was an heirloom. Belonged to my grandparents. They let me keep that. Oh, I'm glad. Are you? Yes. If I can't have it, I'm glad you still have it. Oh, for oh, goodness, what's that? What? Well, something in your pocket. I, I felt it break. The eggs. The what? I had two eggs. Yes, they're broken. In your pocket? Oh, how terrible. What will your wife say? Uh, I haven't got a wife, but Mr. Rosenberg will say plenty. Who's he? We uh, share Central Park, Mr. Rosenberg and I. Oh. Yes. Well, well, I really must leave you. I have an appointment with some friends at the plaza. Well, perhaps we'll meet again, Miss Cheney. Perhaps. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Central Park. Yes. What do we do if it rains? Uh, who cares about rain? Ah, Jared. It's good to rest here on your beautiful carved bed in this valley that belongs to us. 
If only we had a bit of food. Tonight I'll catch one of those fat pigeons and roast it over a fire. And we shall both be arrested. Not until after we've eaten. Ah, being arrested will not be so bad. On a full stomach. Tonight, when we have a fire, perhaps you'll play your violin for me. Please, I'm not a gypsy. My <laughs> fiddle would catch a cold in the night air. Oh, Mr. Rosenberg, we're cops. What? Someone is standing at the foot of our bed. It's Mr. Sweeney. <laughs> He's a friend? Mr. Sweeney is a music lover. He's also a street cleaner. For many weeks, I have promised him that one day I will give him fiddle lessons. Ah, uh, Mr. Sweeney, this is Mr. Rockcar. Huh? He doesn't say very much. No. Mr. Sweeney is shy until he knows you're his friend. Uh, this is Jared, Mr. Sweeney. He is my friend, therefore he is your friend. Ah, and are you living in, in, in the past? We are indeed. But you'll be discovered. The two of you here in the valley, why the cops will put you out. We've thought about that, Mr. Sweeney. No, it happened there's a tool shed where you could put up your beautiful bed. Ah, uh, the tool shed? No one knows of it except myself. That's where I keep my little cat. Come on, I take you there. Oh, Mr. Sweeney, you are indeed a friend. A beautiful man, Mr. Sweeney. Let it rain now. We're pioneers with a roof over our head. <laughs> Here you are, gentlemen. No one will ever find you in me too, Shed. Oh, it is tight and snug. Indeed, indeed, it's perfection. <laughs> yes, I'll set my candelabra on this high shelf. Already it looks like home. I'll unpack our little stove. Gentlemen, you can live here until spring. Mr. Sweeney, in return for your kindness, I shall teach you how to play the fiddle. Ah, we will have our first lesson tomorrow. Well, right now we must set up our bed, and then I'll go hunt for some dinner. I'll put on the soup while you hunt. And I'll go home and tell me wife that I'm taking fiddle lessons. Mrs. Sweeney. Yourself? Here's a piece in the evening paper says there's snow already in the west. Till soon be time to get out me boots. I tell you, Mr. Sweeney, I pity the poor with winter coming on. What more does the paper say tonight? Flights of geese have been observed moving south over the Carolinas. Oh, do read me something brighter. Uh, there's nothing brighter. Mr. Sweeney, I wish we'd a bit of money put aside. And what would you do with it if we had? I'd buy a canary. Ah, I'd buy a fiddle. Well, then aren't you the grand one? A sweet-toned fiddle with a bow and all. I'd play in it of an evening just for the practice, like. A canary would cost much less and make sweeter music. Mrs. Sweeney, I'm going to take lessons how to play the fiddle. Are you now? Starting tomorrow. <laughs> there's a man living in the tool shed. Whatever are you saying? As a matter of fact, there's two men in the tool shed. <laughs> and one of them is a great fiddler. And he's living in your tool shed? It's him will teach me how to play the fiddle. Oh, what if your boss discovers them living there? Yeah, who cares about him? Oh, to be a grand thing, learning to play on the fiddle. Oh, oh, it's you. Where's she go? Catch her! Right here, sit on this bench. Oh, but they'll find me. I'll hold my umbrella over this. I don't think we're just a couple sitting in the rain. Quick, quick, here they come. Stop that girl! Stop this way! You better let me hide that bunch of celery under my coat. Oh, yes, I, I shouldn't have taken it. Now, put your head on my shoulder so they can't see your face. So. It's a terrible thing to do. Where's she go? This way? No, this way! Oh, well, they've gone the other way. Mr. Otker... You've turned out to be a hero. Is it a long time since you've eaten? I, I don't really remember. It seems like several days. You knew I wasn't a famous actress. Of course. But I could be, you know, and, and I will be someday. I wish I had money to give you. Oh, no. Truth is, I've been hungry myself. When you ran into me, I was going to the restaurant there behind the trees to borrow something for our dinner. That's where I got my celery. Oh, and what about the fine apartment that needed two candelabra? I've been living in a furnished room. This morning they told me not to come back until I could pay them what I owe. Well, then you come home with me. 
Mr. Rosenberg and I will share our dinner with you. You have food? We have a pot of soup, to which we'll add this bunch of celery. Oh, oh, I couldn't. But you have no place else to go. I know. And I am frightened. For the first time, I've lost my nerve, I guess. I don't know what to do. Well, come along, then. Let's go home. That's such a beautiful word. Home. Mr. Rosenberg... Where have you been? I was beginning to think. Oh, Miss Cheney, this is Mr. Rosenberg. How do you do, Mr. Rosenberg? You're not a singer, I hope. I'm an actress. Nothing is worse than a singer. She makes faces. La, 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 la. Oh, I love you. La, 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 la. That's all there is to singing. Miss Cheney is going to have dinner with us. Is this a restaurant? I'll go. I, I wouldn't want to put you out. Oh, Mr. Rosenberg, she's going to cry. I'm not. I'm all done with crying. I won't bother him. Thank you for saving me, Mr. Otcar. Keep the salary for your soup. Oh, no, no, you must take it. You've had no food for several no, days. That doesn't matter. Uh, she, too, is hungry? Well, of course she is. Jared, could you not have said to me, here is somebody else who is hungry? Then I would have said, come in, young lady, come in and share our food. You see, Miss Cheney, he isn't a selfish man. Sit down, miss. Sit down. You're welcome. I'll close the door to shut out the rain. And presently we will have dinner. Here's the celery that's cut up in the soup. <laughs> Celery will give it an entirely new flavor. It will not taste like the same soup we ate last night. This is a wonderful place. Oh, the crystal candelabra, you have it here. Yes, I keep it on the high shelf so that nothing can hurt it. And a great carved bed. Oh, golden cupids and angels. Oh, I've never seen such a bed. You'll sleep in it tonight. Is this a hotel? Miss Cheney has no home. You will sleep in the bed, Miss Cheney. What about you? Oh, Mr. Rosenberg and I can rest on top of these tool chests wrapped in our overcoat. Uh, anyway, until tomorrow. Maybe I won't wake up tomorrow. What are you saying? Maybe I'll sleep and sleep all through the long, cold winter. Then I won't know how cold and hungry I am. But in the spring, there'll be tulips at the edge of the lake. And cherry trees will put out their blossoms. You won't see the blossoms, Miss Cheney, if you're asleep. You're right. I do want to see the blossoms in the spring. I'll wake early in the morning. Tomorrow is always another day. The rain will have stopped. The sun will be shining. You'll feel differently about everything. I'm sure I will. The day will be full of hope. At least until noon. Beautiful day. Ah, oh, the air is so appetizing in the early morning for anybody else waking. Perhaps today I'll find a job. Uh, and I will visit a certain concert manager I know with an office in Carnegie Hall. There's a producer who told me to come back this afternoon. He's casting a new play with a wonderful part that I could do. He said I'm just right for it. Jared, what are you planning for today? For me? Nothing special. I'll just walk in the park, do a little thinking. That's good. Mr. Otcar. I want to thank you for letting me stay here last night. And you too, Mr. Rosenberg. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't. It was a pleasure, Miss Cheney. I, for one, was delighted to share our roof with you. I, I do hope that we'll all meet again. But you're coming back here tonight. Oh, no, I, I couldn't do that. Not again. Oh, but you must. You've no place else to go. You must come back. Mustn't she, Mr. Rosenberg? Uh, uh, yes, yes, of course she must. You, you want me to come back here? We do. Promise that you will. Well, uh, I'll expect you not later than sunset. I promise. Very well, Miss Jotcar. I promise. Oh, what a day this has been. Oh, it's you. Who else? Were you expecting the park commissioner? Well, Elizabeth hasn't come back. Sun set half an hour ago. Well, she probably found a job. You'll never hear from her again. Here, I brought some meat. She promised that she'd come back. I, uh, earned a bit of money today playing Tchaikovsky on Fifth Avenue. 
A most appreciative audience. You know, people are always more generous after a heavy rain. I suppose we shouldn't have let her go this morning. I find that Tchaikovsky pays much better than Beethoven. I thought you'd keep her word. Hello. Am I very late? But Miss Cheney, you did come back. I said to myself that I wouldn't, but I've no place else to go. We, uh, we thought you'd found a job. No. They was cast. They were very nice. Told me to see them in two months. Look, I brought some food. Food? Vegetables Wonderful. and bread. An actress I know loaned me a dollar. She had a job in a show. I must have looked pale or something. Anyway, she insisted that I borrow a dollar. So I did. Oh, Miss Cheney, I'm glad you came back. And you, Mr. Otcar? I wouldn't have slept tonight if you hadn't. Those are the kindest words that have been said to me in a long time. There's so little kindness in the world. So little tenderness. Uh-huh. Oh, Mr. Sweeney, come in. Come in. Uh, this is Mr. Sweeney, Miss Chen. How do you do, Mr. Sweeney? Uh-huh. <laughs> Mr. Sweeney is studying to be a violinist. Every night I give him a private lesson in return for the use of his tool house. <laughs> That's the best way I ever heard of paying one's rent. Well, I take out my fiddle and proceed with the lesson while you two cook dinner. I will listen. I'm very fond of music. And I'll cook the dinner. Now, Mr. Sweeney, are we ready? Uh-huh. Excellent. First, I will do it. That's how it should be done, Mr. Sweeney. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Here, take the fiddle. So, now you try it. No, no, no. Uh, the angle of the arm is too high. Look, it moves thus. The fingers come down so... Ah! Oh, that was beautiful, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, with patience, someday he will play a little piece. Uh, All right, uh, try it again, Mr. Sweeney. Try it again. Yes, uh, that's it. Mr. Sweeney. Yourself. Uh, You've not opened the evening paper. Is something wrong? I'm thoughtful, like. Are you indeed? Mr. Rosenberg gave me a fiddle lesson just now before I came home. Did he now? I I can't rightly seem to get the hang of it yet. Oh, perhaps you'll do better tomorrow. If only I had my own fiddle to practice on. Mr. Sweeney, why don't you say what's on your mind? Say it and get it over with. Well, then... They've got a girl there in the tool house. A pretty little thing. It seems she has no home. And is that what's been on your mind all evening? Uh, what else? Oh, I thought it might be some trouble you were in, God save Oh, uh, no. What trouble would I be in? Never mind. It's enough you're not. It's all right, then, about the girl. What girl? The little one I was just telling you about in the tool shed with a pair of them. Oh, her. It's all right. Her staying there, isn't it? Well, now, I don't know, Mr. Sweeney. Let me put my mind on it. Oh, she's a sweet little thing, Mary. Ah, oh, it would be a cruel thing to put a girl on the street. Wouldn't like anyone to do it to me. I suppose she'd be all right there, Mr. Sweeney. It's a fine thing your friends have someone to share their life. Everyone needs a bit of happiness. You know, I've been thinking. We might spend the money we've got in our savings come Christmas for a canary. Ah, uh, you're a good woman, Mary. Yes. It would be a happy house with a canary and singing its little heart away. A good woman. Young lady! Young lady! Please, don't talk too fast. Are you please. following me? Well, I... Yes, because I... if you all call a policeman, there's a law against that sort of thing. And you such a fine-looking gentleman. Young lady, you, you misunderstand me. I, I saw you drop your purse. You, you ran after me to return my purse? I saw you drop it on the path, uh, back near the little bridge. Oh, that's very funny. So what's funny about it? Did you open my purse? Did you look inside? My dear child, I am a, the president of a bank. Why should I look inside your purse? <laughs> 
Why are you laughing? <laughs> because there's nothing inside it. Not a penny. Here, thank you. Thank you very much. You're entirely welcome. Are you really the president of a bank? I am. Do you like your work? I, I, I've, I've never considered the matter in precisely that way, whether or not I like it. Now, now that I do think about it, I suppose, yes, I, I do like it. That's all I really care about, my bank. All you care about? Is it really? Well, just the same, I can see that you're very unhappy. I'm nothing of the sort. Oh, I noticed you just now as I walked past the lake. You were standing there looking at the water with a strange expression on your face. Is there anything that I could do to help you? Help me? Are you a failure, too? Failure? I've told you. I'm the president of a bank. And I'm, I'm not in the habit of talking with strangers in Central Park. Well, good evening, young lady. Well, you're very rude. Even if you are the president of a bank. Miss Cheney. Mr. Archer, you startled me. I, I've been waiting here behind these bushes. I came looking for you. Mr. Rosenberg and I have a surprise for you. Just as I saw you, that man came running after you. I dropped my purse and he found it. I've waited behind the bushes to see what he was up to. What's the surprise you have for me? Oh, come and I'll show you. Mr. Rosenberg's waiting for us. It was he who discovered it, and if you don't like our surprise, please tell Mr. Rosenberg that you do. And you can't guess what this large object is? It can't be a building all hidden under canvas. No, no, not a building. A big truck, perhaps. Who would cover up a truck in the middle of Central Park? Well, she'll never guess, Mr. Rosenberg. Is it a boat? Now, you see, pull the covers away and surprise her. Very well. I pull them down. So. Oh, it's a merry-go-round. A carousel. Covered for the night in case of bad weather. Such beautiful animals. Horses and giraffes. You, you like your surprise, Miss Elizabeth? Of course she likes it. Oh. I think it's the most wonderful surprise I ever had. Come, come, Miss Elizabeth. You shall ride on the carousel. Will it work? I will push it around with this wooden handle. Well, I play the music for you. Just let me get my fiddle out of the case. Climb up, Miss Cheney. Sit on one of the animals. Which shall it be? Any one you wish. I've never before ridden on a merry-go-round. I know. I'll ride the green giraffe. Let me help you. Thank you, Miss Joshua. Huh? You go to Walt for Miss Elizabeth. Hold tight. Please. Oh, this is like flying. I would like to fly through the stars on my green giraffe. There are no stars tonight. It's been cloudy all day. There are stars, millions of stars. There are always stars for those with eyes to see them. Look, it's beginning to snow. Oh, quiet. Somebody's coming. Huh? The man running like a policeman. We've done no wrong. The merry go round's not our property. Well, the carousel is the property of all children. But we're not children. Speak for yourself, my friend. Mr. Rosenberg! Mr. Rosenberg! It's not a policeman, it's Mr. Sweeney. Ah, uh, my friend. Hello, Mr. Sweeney. Oh, I, I heard your fiddle. It sounded as though the little people were dancing in the park. Are you disappointed it's only us? Ah, uh, not at all. I was just after looking for you in the tool house. Mr. Sweeney, my dear wife, has asked me to invite all of you to our apartment for Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner? And uh, how soon would that be? Sometime next week. I suppose we can wait. Uh, then you'll come? Of course we'll come, Mr. Sweeney, with pleasure. Now turn the merry-go-round, Mr. Artcar. Right. I want another ride on my green giraffe. Music, Mr. Rosenberg. I play, I play. All tight. Here we go. This time I'll fly right past the stars, up to the moon. <laughs> what beautiful moon. We'll fly to the moon. Oh. Are you sure this is the right apartment? Set in the mailbox, Michael Sweeney, apartment 5C. And this is it. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas to all of you! Merry Christmas! 
Come in, come in. Uh, is that a delicious aroma roast chicken? Oh, it is, it is. it is. Look at the beautiful Christmas tree. Oh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Sweeney. Oh, God bless you all. Let's you get out of your overcoat now and be... See the tree, Mr. Sorry, Rosenberg, with a little angel on top. You know, I have a feeling the chicken is stuffed with chestnuts. Now make yourself <laughs> comfortable, Mrs. Sweeney. Here's a little present I brought. A present? For me? Be careful. Just open the shoebox to crack. You might fly away. Is it a canary? No, it's only a sparrow. Doesn't sing much, but it does make kind of a peep. All my life I've wanted a bird. Well, isn't he a cute little fella? Peepy birdie. Peepy. Maybe he'll sing a little in the spring. I could dye him yellow, and he'd look like a canary. <laughs> oh, but he might not like that. Oh, well, now perhaps you're right. I just set the box here in the window. Look, look here, my friend. See what my dear wife gave me. Ah, uh, but you oh. all our Christmas money on it. A violin. Can I believe my eyes? Just take it in your hands, Mr. Rosenberg. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is a fine fiddle. Got you a bit for shine. Yes, it is indeed the shiniest fiddle I have ever seen. <laughs> try it. Try it. I hear how it sounds. That. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, you play something, Mr. Sweeney. I, I would not deprive you of your new fiddle on the first day you have it. Ah? <laughs> hey, it's a fine scale, Mr. Sweeney, love. Miss Cheney. Yes? Please come over here near the door. It mustn't be rude while Mr. Sweeney's playing. Miss Cheney, do you know anything about mistletoe? Very little. Well, let me tell you. In ancient days, the Druids believed there was a kind of magic in mistletoe. Did they? And today, we no longer believe in magic. But if we were only a bit wiser, we'd realize that while the magic has gone out of the mistletoe, it's never left our hearts. What are you saying, Mr. Otcar? <laughs> you should never stand under the mistletoe, Miss Cheney, unless you're willing to be kissed. I am willing. Most willing. Radio celebrated playhouse of dramatic entertainment, you are hearing Susan Peters starring in One More Spring, a version for listening by Vincent McConnor of the Robert Nathan novel. Studio One will resume after the customary pause for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. we continue tonight's full hour dramatic entertainment. Miss Susan Peters in Fletcher Markle's production of One More Spring. Dinner's nearly ready, Mr. Rosenberg. Where did Jared go? He said he was going out for a walk. No, the snow? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was a fine dinner last week. I never before tasted the white meat of chicken. It's most interesting. Mr. Rosenberg, I can't live like this. So? Did I ask you to? It's, it's not natural. Well, I have said all along, why did you come here? I know. Why have you stayed? What do you want? I want, want to be cherished. Uh, we all want something. I want to hear music again. Real music. I want to give a concert. My heart tells me that I must make music. It says, what else is there in the world? Don't you think my heart also tells me something? What does your heart tell you, Miss Elizabeth? It tells me that I need affection and love. Because that's what it's made for. We'll die otherwise. 
My heart and I. My heart will stop beating. All right. Love then. But not me, if you please. Mr. Rosenberg. What's that? Mr. Rosenberg, Miss Cheney. It's Jared. Open the door. Something has happened. Here, help me. What is it? This man. Help me carry him inside. Why, it's the beggar who found my purse. Well, how did he get so wet? He jumped into the lake. Close the door, we'll all have pneumonia. He has no blankets or hot water bottles. No matter. Why did you bring him here? Did you expect me to let him freeze to death? Oh, you have so little sense. Bringing people home with you. There are hospitals. We'll take these wet clothes off and get him into bed. He's a rich man. You aren't going to help. At least you can be quiet. The president of a bank, and yet you bring him to a tool shed. Please go away and don't bother me. Very well. I will go away. Well, Miss Cheney. I should have gone weeks ago. In fact, I should never have come here in the first place. But I, I, I didn't mean to... I'll go away and I'll never come back. Never. Miss Cheney. Goodbye. There now. Feeling better? You, you saved my life. But don't ask me to be grateful to you on that account. Why did you jump into the lake, Mr. Sheridan? Because I've lost everything in the world that's worth having. Oh? What would that be? I, for one, can't imagine. I've lost my bank. He has a bank! And with it, my position in the world. Well, position is not as important as you might imagine. I'm a concert violinist, yet it's been two years since I gave my last concert. Then I'm a failure, like yourself. I am not a failure. Great violinists have been cold and hungry before. I'm very tired. I don't know what to do, where to go. Well, you can remain here with us. For a short time, perhaps. Until I can think of something. To... You're welcome to stay here as long as you wish. He's asleep. Yes. Mr. Rosenberg, where do you suppose Miss Cheney's gone? How would I know? It's been several hours. Well, it's no use to go after her. Where will she sleep tonight? Maybe she, too, will jump into the lake. Oh, don't say such a thing. I'll never forgive myself letting her go like that. The city's so large. She's lost somewhere, and it's all my fault. See, I come back. Elizabeth! Well, don't stand there, you two... Take some of these bundles out of my arm. Oh, Elizabeth. What's in all these packages? Blankets, aspirin, nose cake, cough drops, and food. Food? Now be as sick as you like, all three of you. But, Miss Cheney, where did you get all these things? I bought them. But you had no money. I got some. How? Where? Have you forgotten? I am an actor, and I've been acting. You've been what? Someday I'll show you what I did. Right now, help me get these things unwrapped. <laughs> Look at this! A hot water bottle! Elizabeth, I'm glad that you've come back. Thank you, dear. Now, we must take our patient's temperature. I even brought a thermometer. Ah, I look in. Elizabeth, I... I discovered tonight... I love you. Did you, Jerry? I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have told you I've no right. Oh, Jerry. Oh, all this talk of love. Don't you hear those bells? It's midnight. The start of another year. And I would like to wish a happy new year to all the world. That's how happy I am. Happy new year, world. Happy new year. Another spoonful of soup, Mr. Sheridan. That's the best soup I ever tasted. My cook can't touch you. Thank you. Another spoonful? Where is everyone? Well, Mr. Rosenberg's playing his violin on Fifth Avenue, and Jared went for a walk. Today he's thinking about the future. The future? What future? You're all failures here. Why, Mr. Sheridan? And you, too. Why don't you give up your dreams of being an actress? Study shorthand or something. I can't give up my dreams. At least, not yet. As for your friend, Mr. Rutkar, I, I can't even discover what he wants to do in the world. He isn't sure himself. Mr. Not... Cheney, one is either successful or one is not. The whole world is nothing but a bank, my dear, a bank in which there is profit for everybody. Unfortunately, Mr. Sheridan, everybody doesn't know how to sign a check. How long have I been here with you? Nearly three weeks. You know, it's very curious. 
You people seem to have done something to me. The fate of my bank is no longer a matter of great interest, and I'm, I'm not even curious about the stock market. I wonder if I'm still out of my head. Oh, you've had no fever for several days. I suppose the police will be looking for me. They'll never find you here. Why will they be looking for you, Mr. Sheridan? What have you done? I took the money from the bank and invested it in foreign currency. Lost every dollar. Was this your money? Of course not. Not a penny of it. Well, then you could replace it with your own money. Replace it? Well, if you'll excuse my saying so, it seems fairly obvious that you should, then. Well, I, I suppose you're right. You know, I, I think I've been overworking. I must have been. A bank president shouldn't get himself into a situation like this. He certainly shouldn't. I'm, I'm afraid I've not been very bright. Oh, I wouldn't feel too badly. You really don't have to be terribly bright to be a bank president, do you? I beg your pardon? Well, I mean, I always thought someone else did all the work. They do. And it just seems I've lost all interest in life, in the bank, in everything. It's all become so pointless. Mr. Sheridan, isn't there someone you'd like me to notify that you're here, that you're safe? Well, there isn't anyone who'd be interested in my whereabouts. No family? All I have is a big, empty house. No friends? None. Only you and Jared and Mr. Rosenberg. Miss Cheney, I want you to know I've been very happy here. I know. I've been happier myself since I came here. Happier than ever before in all of my life. What's more, I'm going to stay here. Oh, oh, but Mr. Sheridan, you can't. But now I, I feel a bit tired. I think I'll, I'll take a nap. If the police should come, tell them I was waiting to give myself up until after my fever went down. Wake me up in time for dinner. Yes, Mr. Sheridan. This is where I earned my money that night you rescued Mr. Sheridan from the lake. Here in Columbus Circle? Uh huh. Don't walk among the people, I'll show you. But Elizabeth, come on, you see for yourself. Now, Jared, you better move away from me until I finish. Finish what? What are you going to do? You'll see. Now, pretend you don't know me. Elizabeth! Ladies and gentlemen, please. What's this? Hey, hello, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I am an actress. I will tell you at once that I've had very little experience. However,. I believe that I do have talent. I'll let you judge for yourself. I would like to do a scene from a play. Is there anyone here who could help me? That's a scene from Shakespeare that you remember from school. Oh, Shakespeare. But I, I once played Orlando. In Twelfth Night? Where was this? At Brooklyn College. <laughs> do you remember this scene? How now, Orlando? Where have you been all this while? I, I think I remember. You, a lover. And you serve me such another trick. Never come in my sight more. My fair Rosalind, I come within an hour of my promise. Break an hour's promise and love. He that will divide a minute into a thousand parts and break but a part of a thousandth part of a minute in the affairs of love, it may be said of him that Cupid has slapped him on the shoulder. Hey, he's all right. Not bad. That's his way to die Pardon me, dear Rosalind. Nay, and you be so tardy. Come no more in my sight. I had as least be wooed of a snail. Yeah, of a snail? I of a snail. For though he comes slowly, he carries his house on his head. <laughs> How much money did you get? Almost three dollars. That's how I made the money the night you found Mr. Sheridan. I don't know why I'd never thought of doing it before, acting in Columbus Circle. If you do it without a license, you may land in jail. What kind of a license? Oh, I don't know. Probably an acting license. Oh, there isn't such a thing. Well, it should be. <laughs> Can I carry one of those bags for you? They aren't heavy. You know, we've enough groceries for several days. Tomorrow I shall fix a pot roast with small white onions. <laughs> Keep the fish. 
fiddle in your neck, Mr. Sweeney. Huh? You cannot play it if you hold it in your stomach. Oh. Oh, here's your wife, home from work. Oh, Mr. Rosenberg. Mrs. Sweeney. Phew. Oh, let me sit down. I'm that worn out. Oh, Oh, we did a bad day at the bank. I had no idea you worked for a bank. Oh, for ten years I've operated an elevator there. Down and up, down and up until the day of the tragedy. Since then, it's been down and down. Well, uh, what tragedy was that? The president of the bank, of course. He disappeared. When was this? What was his name? About two months ago. And Sheridan's his name. I thought so. Oh, who's such a fine gentleman he was. Never speaking to a soul, not so much as a nod. Uh, uh, where is he gone? Uh, do they know? Nearly a trace of him until this very day. Today? Someone reported seeing the poor man in Central Park. Oh, good heavens, I must go at once. Oh, the police are searching the park. You'll probably be asked to help Mr. Sweeney, my love. Uh, uh, what about me fiddle lessons? I'll finish it tomorrow. Good night. <laughs> Where is he? Here I am. We're just sitting down for dinner. Oh, is there anything wrong? Wrong. The park is full of police, and they're all looking for Mr. Sheridan. Well, they'll never find him here. I shall grow a beard. Sit down, but everyone. First, I'm going to eat my dinner. Oh, my. Let's walk across the park to Fifth Avenue. Yes, sir. The air is very soft this afternoon, Mr. Sherry. And sweet, as though there might never be another winter. Could this be the first day of spring? I saw Violet this morning down by the lake. Miss Elizabeth, I must talk with you. Yes, Mr. Sheridan? Let's walk a little faster. Mr. Rosenberg and Jared are quite a distance behind us, but I, I don't want them to over here. All right. What is it you want to tell me? Miss Cheney, you said something uh, many weeks ago about using my own money here to make things right at the bank. Yes, I remember. Well, I'm, I'm going to replace the money that belonged to the depositors. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they'll be most grateful. And I intend to give myself up to the first policeman I meet. But what will they do to you, Mr. Sheridan? Very little, I imagine, if I return all the money. We'll miss you. These have been the happiest months of my entire life. Yes, I, I expect they have. I shall remember them every moment as something very precious. Something I, I may never know again. I know exactly what you mean. I suppose one day soon it'll be all over for me. Hello, there's a parade down Fifth Avenue. Yes, I, I hear a band. Oh, it must be the first parade of the season. Come, we'll, we'll, we'll get to Fifth Avenue before Mr. Rosenberg overtakes us. He and Jared are way behind. Where there's a parade, there will be a policeman. And I will surrender to them. Mr. Sheridan. I will give myself up. I wonder what kind of parade it is. One parade like another. Do you see any policemen in this crowd? Yes. Yes, there's one in the corner, a very young policeman. I will surrender to him. That'll be good. There might be a reward. He may have a wife and several small children. Bless you, Elizabeth Cheney. Yours is the pure heart. May it always remain unchanged. Now I will speak to the policeman. Yes, Mr. Sheridan. You stay here so that you will not be involved. I prefer to do this alone. Goodbye, Miss Elizabeth. Goodbye. Isn't that Mr. Sheridan? Sheridan? Yeah, that's him. That's that man. Stop me! Don't stop him! He's getting in front of the police! Unconscious. The doctor says it'll be several hours before he can tell if she has a concussion. He'll be coming back. That mob of fools, they knocked her down. Oh. Uh, that poor little thing. When you brought her through the door, I thought she was dead. I believe she had the sense to bring her here. Well, there was no place else. When the ambulance driver asked where she lived. I couldn't tell him the tool house in Central Park. Mr. Rosenberg had disappeared. I didn't know what to do. Oh, now don't you fret. I'll take care of her. But it's a good thing it happened on a Saturday and me home from the bank. 
I'll go back and sit with her for a while. And see that you don't disturb her now. Oh, not make a sound. Elizabeth? Oh, my darling. Do not die. Please. I need you. Life would be so empty without you. I know I've so little to give. Only my love. Only my heart. Which is no use to anyone. But you must live. The long winter's almost at an end. Soon we'll have another spring after all these long months of cold. You said once that you wanted to see the blossoms again. Do not die, my love. Let there be one more spring. Jared. Elizabeth. I heard what you just said. Did you? We will see the blossoms together. Oh, my darling. change the sparrow into a canary for you. Oh, no, darling. I've come to be very fond of the poor bird. Hello there. Mr. Rothkorn. <laughs> Your husband let me in. Oh, 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 well, now, you two sit here by the window. I've my dishes to wash. Now, call if there's anything you want. Thank you, Mrs. Sweeney. How do you feel tonight, Elizabeth? Very well, thank you. The doctor says I can leave here whenever I wish. Oh, I'm glad. I've been talking to the sparrow. Now that spring is coming, I think he wants to be free again. I shall ask Mrs. Sweeney to let him go when the first green leaves appear. Jared, where am I going when I leave here? Well, I I can't take you back to the tool house. I've been living there alone since Mr. Rosenberg disappeared. Jared. Yes, Elizabeth. You called me darling once. I did, but only because I thought you couldn't hear me. I've called you many affectionate names, Elizabeth, but always in silence within my heart. Why in silence? Oh, I'm a wanderer, Elizabeth. I'm not yet ready to settle down. I'm wise enough to have no illusions about myself. You're fond of me as you're fond of every living creature, even this little sparrow. More than fond, Jared. I love you. Love me? But I... I've nothing to give you in return for your love, neither wealth, nor hope, nor promises. You can give me love, Jared. That's all I ask, all I want, your love. That's not enough. I... Good night, Elizabeth. Where are you going? To walk in the park. I must think about all this. No, Jared, come back. <laughs> Mr. Sweeney, I've the most wonderful news. Uh, come in, lad, come Where in. Who is it, Mr. Sweeney? It's me, Mrs. Sweeney, Jared. I'm rich. Whatever are you saying? This morning, a man came to the door of the tool house before I was awake, offered $2,000 in cash for my antique bed. You took it, did you not? I did at once. I was looking for you this morning, Miss Health. Oh, that must have been while I was out buying a car. Car, is it? Yes, yeah, a second-hand car to take Elizabeth riding in. The rest of the money, I'm going to give Elizabeth to rent a little apartment for herself. But, Jerry, I'll she... slip in now and tell her the news. Come with me, both of you. Watch your face. Jerry, Elizabeth isn't uh, here. No? Where is she? She drove off in a big car. Car? With a fine chauffeur. Here's the address on this slip of paper where she went. Mrs. Sweeney and I were just going to visit her. It's over on Fifth Avenue. Oh, I'll come with you. My car's outside. I'll drive you there. Here it is. Oh, this is the place. Oh, oh. so it looks 
like a puzzle. You're certain that you have the right address, Mrs. Sweeney? Sure. There it is above the door. Same address I have on the slip of paper. There's a light in every window. Now, what's Elizabeth doing in a place like this? Ring the bell, Mr. Sweeney, love. I will that. I will at once. Oh, do I look all right? This must be a private home. Good evening. Uh, we're, uh, we're looking for Miss Elizabeth Cheney. Come in, please. Thank uh, you. Oh, this is a fine mansion. You'll step into the ballroom. The concert will begin in a moment. Concert? What concert? Uh, this way. Come along, Mr. Sweeney, dear. Oh, Mr. Upcar. Oh, yes? Well, I'm glad to see you. Oh, Mr. Sheridan, what are you doing here? <laughs> this is my home. You live in this museum? It is, isn't it? Come, I have something to show you. Oh, well, but what about the Sweeney? Well, my butler will look after them. Come along upstairs. Tell me, do you know what's happened to Elizabeth? Miss Cheney? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you'll see her in good time. Right now, oh, I'm... Jared! Right. Jared, I'm giving you a concert! Mr. Rosenberg, where have you been? Here with Mr. Sheridan. He's invited a very select audience tonight to hear me play, even a few critics. Jared, I'm giving a concert! See you later. Good luck. <laughs> Here we are, Mr. Rutkar. Look. Well, of all... It was you who bought my bed. <laughs> didn't you care? No, I didn't even suspect. <laughs> I had one of my assistants buy it for me. Doesn't it look handsome here? Oh, but why did you want it if you told me I'd have given it to you? I, I wanted it as sort of a memento of these past months. They say I've been suffering from some sort of amnesia. Amnesia, really? I'll keep it here yeah. to remind me of all the good things I discovered with you and Miss Cheney in Central Park. Affection, kindness... Hello. Oh, there you are. I heard your voice, Jerry. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, how beautiful you look. This is a new dress. Mr. Sheridan gave it to me. Oh. I I see you. You'll be living here with Mr. Sheridan and Mr. Rosenberg, then. <laughs> Don't be a fool, Jared. Elizabeth's been waiting all evening for you to come. Oh. It's all she talked about. Oh, my God. Mr. Rosenberg's begun his concert. I'd, I'd better join my guest downstairs. You two come down when you finish talking. Elizabeth. Jared, I was so afraid you wouldn't come. There's so much I want to say. I know. Isn't it wonderful the way things have worked out? Mr. Sheridan repaid all the money at the bank, and he still has lots left. He's going to sponsor Mr. Rosenberg's career. Well, what about you, Elizabeth? Me? I, I guess that's up to you, Jared. Oh, my dear. Darling, I... <laughs> Look, I, I can't talk here. This place smothers me. I'll get my coat and we'll leave. Well, don't you want to hear the concert? Oh, Mr. Rosenberg won't miss us. Elizabeth, I... I bought a car. It's waiting outside. A car? Second-hand car. Come on, we'll drive to the moon tonight. Just the two of us. You know what I'd like to do first? What? I'd like to take a ride... Through Central Park. You have heard Miss Susan Peters starring in Fletcher Markle's production of One More Spring by Robert Nathan. Another of the world's great stories from radio's celebrated playhouse of dramatic entertainment. Tonight's script was especially prepared for this series by Vincent McConnor. And the original musical score was composed by Robert Stringer and conducted by Alexander Semler. Now again, Mr. Markle. May a producer identify the principals in our cast tonight. In the foreground... Elizabeth. ...was played, of course, by Miss Peters. You may be seen currently on the screen, starring in the Columbia Pictures production, The Sign of the Ram. Mr. Rosenberg. ...was played by Everett Sloan. Mr. Sheridan. ...was Glenn Anders. Mr. Sweeney. ...was Neil Fitzgerald. Mrs. Sweeney. ...was played by Mary Michael. Hedley Rennie was the deputy sheriff. Gregory Morton was the Shakespearean student. And the voices of Robert Dryden, Miriam Wolf, and Louis Quinn assisted. Jared Otcar was played by your producer. Next week from Studio One, 
one of the most relentlessly exciting stories by one of the masters of adventure romance. Our story is The 39 Steps by John Buchan, and our star is one of Hollywood's most gifted performers, Mr. Glenn Ford. We hope you'll be with us. Meantime, may I remind you that every spring brings with it the annual Red Cross Drive for Fun. This month, the American Red Cross must raise $75 million to finance its program for the coming year. Your contribution will help make the Red Cross helpful to others. Make it a generous one. And now until next week, in the 39 Steps with Glenn Ford, this is Fletcher Markle with a good night and thank you from all of us in Studio One. This is Lee Vines, and this is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System.